Well, hello, Faith family, and thank you for joining me on this Wednesday edition of The Daily Connection. It's a time when we get together in the Word, and more importantly, the Word gets into us. We're still looking at 1 Peter chapter 3 and how we see the Holy Spirit actively working in today's world. And just so we can get into verse 20, which will be our focus, I want to drop back to 18, because if you just start in verse 20, it sounds a little bit disjointed. So start with me in verse 18. Let's read down through verse 20. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring you to God. He, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in the past were disobedient when God patiently waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. In it, a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. So if you're familiar with the letter, you know, Peter's letter, you know that from time to time Peter can incorporate aspects of Old Testament history that, that almost seem to come out of nowhere. Uh, and you kind of have to say, hold on a minute, where'd that come from and what's the implication of it? Well, in this case, it starts off in verse 18, where, or excuse me, verse 19, it says, or actually it is verse 18, that he was made alive by a spirit in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison. And then in verse 20, he begins to identify that who in the past were disobedient when God patiently waited the days of Noah. And so we're talking about an event that took place during that time period of Genesis 6. Um, and clearly, we've got to identify the subject of those in prison from that same context as well. And so for that, we, uh, you know, we can go to Genesis 6, but before we go there... I want to take you to 1 Peter chapter 2 because there Peter almost says the same thing but says it a little bit differently and gives us a better idea of who he's talking about in 1 Peter 3.18. So 2 Peter 2.4 says, For if God didn't spare the angels who sinned but cast them into hell and delivered them in chains of utter darkness to be kept for judgment, and if he didn't spare the ancient world but protected Noah, our preacher of righteousness, and seven others when he brought the flood on the world of the ungodly, so there it seems like Peter may be linking together those angels who were dispelled from heaven when Satan rebelled. He didn't rebel alone. He, he had kind of gotten a force together with him that they rebelled against God and against his holy angels. Uh, all of them now in a, in a demonic sense because they have rejected the righteousness of God. They've embraced the sinful nature that, that overcame uh, Satan, Lucifer, uh, whatever you want to say there. And so God dispelled them from, from the throne room, from heaven. And so the judgment was that they were sent down and they dwelled on earth. And we see here that judgment came to them. And this like, judgment came uh, through uh, the flood. Noah was protected. Uh, of course, when you get down to the bottom of 2 Peter 2, it says this. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment, especially those who follow the polluting desires of the flesh and despise authority. So that kind of goes back to the motive that was working within those. But I love what he says right there. God protects the righteous, those who are pursuing godliness, meanwhile bringing judgment on those who have rejected his righteous standard. And that's where we go back to Genesis 6 for a moment. Or that's where we go to Genesis 6 for a moment. In Genesis 6 verse 1, we're told that when mankind began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took any they chose as wives for themselves. Now let me just quickly say, sons of God in, in the Old Testament almost always references angels, whereas in the New Testament it's always talking about us. We are the children of God, sons of God. Well, in the Old Testament, when that phrase is used, it's, free, it's speaking about angels in general because God is their father. God created them. There was not this process whereby God created man and woman and then a biological process um, initiated. No, with angels, God created them and they were. there's no pro procreation there. It was never intended to be procreation there. That's why when we see that the sons of God are beginning to desire the daughters of men, we see a, 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 uh, a coming together that was never intended by God, that was completely in opposition to and defiance of God's design. So therefore, God says, My spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. Their days will be 120 years. Uh, we know that that meant from that proclamation to the time of the flood was 120 years. And from that, we have the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Uh, when the sons of God came, the daughters of mankind who bore children of them, they were powerful men of old. So it produced not necessarily superhuman, but humans who were a little beyond the normal standard 
who were maybe bigger, stronger, faster, obviously great warriors. Uh, and that word famous men does not necessarily mean that these were good. It just means that they were a cut above. They, they stood out from all the others um, that were in that area. But the Lord obviously saw wickedness, how the widespread nature of it, and that every inclination of mankind, in verse 5 of chapter 6, by the way, was nothing but evil. And the Lord regretted. Then he said, I'll wipe mankind from the face of the earth. So he's bringing judgment against these angels, these, demo- these demons, these you know, um, followers of Lucifer. They're, they're now demons who have inhabited human form, human bodies, and have had intercourse with the son, daughters of men. He's now bringing judgment on them, as he said back in 1 Peter chapter 3. They're facing that judgment. And, and, and the whole point is this. The Spirit of God has the power to, un, to render judgment against unrighteousness. But as it says right here, some were saved. Back in, I'm, I'm now back in 1 Peter 3, verse 20. Uh, while the ark was being prepared, God was patient, and God was using the preaching of Noah, the righteous preaching of Noah, to promote the message that judgment was coming in something that had never been seen before. God was going to destroy the earth. But only eight people responded. That would be Noah and his family. These responding, having gone onto the ark, they were saved. Meaning that even still now, the Spirit of God was working in the life of Noah and his family, Give, helping them believe by faith that although they'd never seen a flood, although they'd never experienced any kind of a judgment like that, that God would fulfill his word. And it's a reminder of us that you know, the author asked the question, how does God show his patience today? Because he withholds, he's withholding his judgment. He has every right as a holy, righteous God to judge the world and judge it right now, every right. And yet he withholds that judgment. Now, does that mean that the ramifications of sin and the outworking of sinful actions is not present with us? I I would say no. I'd say they very much are. We see that. However, the ultimate judgment against sin is being withheld. And at the same time, God continues to promote and present and proclaim his message through his people and empower it through his spirit. And so we see the spirit of God working to awaken the dead souls of those the unredeemed. And then to transform the life of the redeemed to be to be conformed to the image of Christ. And so, although we look around us and we see a lot to be discouraged about, we see um, all kind of reports, we see lifestyles promoted, we see attitudes carried out and that are contrary to the designs of God and contrary to the desire of God as revealed in His Word. And yet, the Spirit of God is still working. The Spirit of God is still moving. So, just as it was in the days of Noah, 120 years of faithful preaching. Let us not grow weary, but let us remain focused and committed to the understanding that God is withholding his wrath and God is sending out his people to proclaim his message and the Spirit empowers us to that ministry. Well, I love you, faith family. May today be a day of empowering. May today be a day where you understand that the Spirit of God working in you for the purpose of presenting the word, proclaiming the gospel, and then maybe discipling someone who is born again. And as we're doing that, what we're doing is we're faithfully carrying out the commission he's given us to live sent.